Oh, hey, Chris. How was the uh, colonoscopy? Oh, brutal, man. I, I don't know, something snapped off and it's just hurting. Yikes. Sorry about that. Hey, you know how some dogs sort of look like their owners? What if case makers shared the same traits as their cases? That's ridiculous. No, it kind of works, right? I mean, because like the Pure Bay 600 is cool, right? And, and you're arguably cool, right? Hmm. The case is super quiet and you've always been on the soft spoken side. Yeah, yeah. See, it's totally true. Actually, there's one more thing we have in common. What's that? Well, after the colonoscopy, I think I also support a 360 millimeter radiator. Does that like include push pull or? The Pure Bay 600 from Be Quiet offers a tempered glass side panel, sound damping material, and a highly versatile design. Ships with a pair of powerful Pure Wings 2 fans and intentional support for 360 radiators. Click the link in the description for more info. What's cracking, people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'll be assembling April's PC of the month. Sorry I'm a little bit late on this, but it should be a pretty killer system. We've got an $850 budget Ryzen 5 gaming PC. I guess it could also be a streaming PC, or really you could use it for anything that the hardware will allow, which as you're about to see is quite a bit. I'm pretty stoked about the price point today. I think staying well under a thousand bucks puts this rig well within reach for a lot of us budget gamers and builders out there. Of course, if you were looking for something a bit more high-end, go ahead and check out the recent Ryzen build that I did, including a GTX 1080 Ti and an 1800X. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at the parts we'll be using for today's build. All right, look at this. I'm on a tripod today. Woo wee! Moving on up in the world, getting fancy. Figured you guys would appreciate it. Won't have to deal with my shaky cam chronicles like you usually do. But uh, let's, let's take a look first at our CPU here. And there was a lot of debate and internal struggle that I was dealing with when choosing uh, a Ryzen part. And uh, eventually I settled on this Ryzen 5 1600. I almost went with the 1600X, but I figured this was the better value considering our tight budget. Um, honestly, you're still getting six cores, 12 threads. It's gonna be great for, for uh, multi-threaded applications, of course, um, as well as gaming, especially since I'm targeting this build to to really game and shine best at 2560 by 1440. Um, you can definitely get away with that and we'll talk more about that later. But I think the 1600 is, is a good call. It's a 65 watt TDP part, so we don't really need too much cooling power. And with the included Wraith Spire, which you can check out my full review of in the, uh, the top right corner of the screen, if you haven't seen that yet, I think we're gonna be saving quite a bit of cash this way uh, so that we can actually dump it into other more important uh, parts in our computer. But um, I think it's also gonna overclock fairly well on our motherboard here, which is the Asus Prime. Let me go ahead and move this guy out of the way. The Asus Prime B350 Plus. I've actually been using this board quite a bit uh, ever since the launch of Ryzen, um, mainly just for testing and stuff. And I've, I've actually really liked it so far. It overclocks well enough and uh, just as well as like an X370 board, um, or at least the ones that I've tried it with. And the, the memory uh, compatibility is actually pretty solid. Ever since ASUS started rolling out those BIOS updates, we've been able to hit some nice 3200 megahertz on, on various kits, including this Ripchaws 5 16 gigabyte kit. This is G-Scale memory, and it's, it's totally good stuff, DDR4, 3200 megahertz. So we're gonna be running it at that rated speed, which I'm very confident that we can hit, no problem. And we've also got a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda for our only storage drive. I know you guys are gonna kill me. Kyle, how could you? not include an SSD in this build. I can already feel the riots brewing in the comments. But guys, with 850 bucks to spare, I really wanted to squeeze every last ounce of performance out of our, uh, our gaming PC here, which really I had to attribute that money or distribute that money to, um, to, to like the CPU, the video card, and I didn't really want to cut corners in those areas. So what, it ended up, what ended up happening was I cut corners with our storage. Um, but that's okay, I think, because an SSD is super easy to upgrade later down the line if you just want to drop one in and migrate your OS and other applications onto it. Should be pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. But I, I will say, if you guys are building something similar to, to the build that you see here and you have an extra, you know, 100 bucks or so to spare, I would highly recommend getting an SSD in the 250-ish gig capacity um, for your operating system because it will, in fact, make your system run a bit zippier, actually much zippier. But for the purpose of today's video, I think the 7200 RPM mechanical will do the job just fine for now. Moving on to our power supply, we've got a 550-watt EVGA unit. This is just a very generic sort of uh, budget-oriented power supply here. And I actually thought when I purchased it that it was 80 plus certified, at least 80 plus bronze. It's not, there's no 80 plus rating on it, which is kind of strange, um, but I'm still fairly confident that it should be okay for our needs. So, I mean, you can expect maybe 75% 
uh, or so efficiency as opposed to 80 plus. See what I did there? Um, but honestly, we've got a low TDP part here for our CPU. Even if we overclock it, I think that's not gonna draw too much power at all. And we've also got a fairly power efficient video card here from AMD, the brand new RX 580. This in particular is the power color Red Devil. Comes factory overclocked with a bit more headroom, um, but uh, the RX 580, which just launched but from AMD not too long ago, um, is quite a bit more power efficient as well than the RX 480, even though it's using the same Polaris 10 uh, GPU in there. We should be able to get away with, you know, a non 80 plus certified a power supply at least i would hope hope so hopefully this build doesn't melt or incinerate by the end of it all let me go ahead and adjust the camera angle shaky cam chronicles are back again woo and finally we've got our case of the hour this is the spec alpha from corsair as part of their carbide series it's only about 75 80 bucks so a super budget oriented case great for a build like this and a lot of you guys have actually been requesting that i do a build in this chassis which i was like well yeah if there's enough request for it then i will so here it is this is going to be my first time building in it personally so i have i'm not sure what to expect. I haven't really seen a full review of it yet. Uh, it's been more or less well received from what I understand, but it's always different and, and nice to just experience it yourself firsthand. So looking forward to building in this sucker today. Hopefully it doesn't give me too many problems. But those, my friends, are all the parts for today's build. Overall, I'm very excited to put it together. I think the end result is going to be glorious. So let's go ahead and kick it off to a quick time lapse and get to building. Okay guys, here's the finished build, and she's looking pretty good, actually. For the budget we had to work with, I'm pretty impressed how we were able to color match as well as we did. There's really no color clashing drama going on, apart from maybe the green sticker on the hard drive, but fortunately that's tucked away in the drive cage, so you can't really see it too much. You guys may have noticed that I peeled the sticker off of the power supply during the time lapse, only to reveal a manufacturing flaw underneath, which is kind of a bummer. It looks like some sort of blemish or, or, or paint got on there before they put the sticker on. Ah, whatever, it's just a cosmetic affair. No big deal. Um, cable management in the spec alpha wasn't terrible. It wasn't great either. At first I thought it was gonna be really rough because there's hardly any room uh, from, the, from first glance behind the motherboard tray. And then you realize uh, quickly that the uh, the back side panel actually is indented. So it does give you some extra space there, um, but sort of minimal with the tie down points. I wish there was a few more of those. And the included zip ties with this case are just, just too short. They're way too short. So Corsair, maybe make them a little bit longer for next time. One thing I ought to mention is that there's actually no cable routing hole near the eight pin CPU connector. So that means I had to route the cable all the way across the VRM, across the entire motherboard and through the same hole that I routed the 24 pin ATX cable, which kind of looks a bit silly. Fortunately, the, the power supply cables are black, but if they weren't, God, that would, that would just look horrendous. So, um, also something to be aware of if you're gonna be going this route with this case. Uh, there's also, you know, you can sort of see the, the cables coming through the, uh, the, the, the right side of the um, motherboard tray there. So it doesn't look the cleanest. I could have spent a bit more time tidying that up and making sure that they're not visible from this side of the case, but that's added time that I didn't really wanna spend. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I kind of like how the fans are, you know, have red LEDs in them. It sort of illuminates just the right side of the case just a bit, Give, gives it a bit of glow without having to buy some LEDs. But um, overall, very happy with how this turned out. Stay tuned for part two, where we do a full analysis. We do all the gaming benchmarks, overclocking, uh, acoustics and thermals and that sort of thing. So it should be very fun. But guys, let me know what you think of this build. 850 bucks. 
We can, I know for sure we can definitely do 2560 by 1440 gaming uh, with the majority of titles at pretty decent settings. But let me know what you guys think, if this is a good value, if you like the parts list for, for this month. And yeah, love to hear your feedback. As always, thank you very much. Toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. And check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for just $1.50 a month. First two weeks are completely free. You can back out anytime. Have a good one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm Kyle with Bitwit. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.